Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The Reverend Kevin Robson is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Hebrews chapter 4. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. In the name of Jesus, amen. At its core, the epistle to the Hebrews is a sermon, a litany of encouragement and exhortation, premise and promise, satisfying comfort for the soul. The Christ of God speaks to us today. This is God who spoke to his people of old through his prophets. The Son is the radiance of the glory of the Father, the very image, the substance, the exacting essence, the character of the divine nature by which He is the creating Word. As such, He upholds everything in creation throughout time from first to last. In glory far superior to the angels, he is the preeminent, the firstborn son of the household of God, far greater than Moses, the faithful household servant. Christ is the foundation of your salvation, having perfected you in suffering upon the cross, having established your flawless righteousness in human flesh, by which he has named you his brother. By his death he has destroyed the power of death and the devil. Now he lives and reigns, knowing you and your suffering, ever present to help you when you are doubted and tempted to slide backward into a state of faithlessness whenever you are at the cliff's edge in yielding to sin. Collectively, you have been pulled back in, into his house, a called spiritual priesthood, resurrected, holding fast in confidence, encouraging and admonishing one another all the more to more closely listen, to abide in the obedience of the faith, clinging only to his holy and precious word as the life-giving source of strength and steadfast patience, despite long-suffering trials, persecution, 
cross-bearing. Whatever the devil and his horde of demons have left to hurl at your head and heart. But then in this sermon to the Hebrews comes the snap to warning, a wake-up call that suddenly brings you back into a clear and present state of danger. Follow now, not in the disobedient pattern of the Israelites in the wilderness who failed to stand firm on the divine promise. They lost the foreshadowed benefit of the Old Testament Sabbath. They separated themselves from an eternal divine rest and peace, abandoned the grace of God's mercy received, borne aloft in the word preached, the sword wielded now by the church, living and active, that penetrating, saving word taken in only in repentance and faith, worked by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Reflect on that catastrophic tragedy of the multitude of wandering Israelites, faith lost upon the desert floor and perished into an eternal death. And yet, yet hear now what is declared to you. The promise of entering his rest still stands. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. There is, of course, a mysterious puzzle that now follows. Ingrained in our sin-stained existence in the middle of this fallen creation, Christ's salvation of you is finished. Your transgressions have been forgiven. You are righteous in the Father's sight. Jesus has done it. From the cross, he declared once again in a creating word that it was finished. Once again, God has rested from his work. But now comes our response to all that he alone has handed over as pure gift and grace. A difficult journey, at times frantic and exhausting through an earthly veil of tears. Let us therefore strive, urges the preacher. Let us strive to enter that rest. On the one hand, the striving. On the other, the rest. Oh, how often we confuse those two under anxiety and stress. Or let the one dominate or disorder the other as we may fear and fret over the future. I think that's why we congregate in a space like this, even in the middle of hectic days of work, to let not the striving overtake the rest, to get things restored into their proper perspective and sequence, the worship of the saints gathered around altar and pulpit and font is rest now, a foretaste of that heavenly rest that, await, that awaits the faithful, such as we hear a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. 
or to paraphrase one of our earthly, er, early church fathers. The Sabbath day rest that we experience here on earth shall one day be brought to a conclusion, not by the passage of the sun beyond the horizon into the deepening shadows of evening's darkness, but rather by that great and final day of the Lord, an eighth an eternal day consecrated by the resurrection of Christ. Such rest as we experience now in worship is only but a foreshadow of the eternal rest, not only of our spirit, but our body. There in the eternal paradise, you and I will rest and see, see and love, love and and praise. This is what shall be in the end without end. For there is our aim that together we would attain to the kingdom of which there is no end. Let the two edged sword of his word have its way with you. This, then, is your striving now to listen, to receive, and to respond. As such, you are readied, drawn ever nearer to the throne of grace. It is all God's work as expert surgeon who skillfully labors to restore broken human hearts to be welcomed into that Sabbath day rest. This is the testimony of the power of his word to equip its hearers, undeserving as we are, for entry into that rest. God's word has achieved its purpose when the words of the baptized faithful correspond to this word in your confession of the faith, in your fervent prayers to him who bids you with open arms, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.